You know, Peter, on the surface, wasp approaches seem pretty straightforward. Okay, they're pretty cool. You get a glide path and all. Yeah, now wait a minute, though. There's a bit more to it than that. Before you go off shooting wasp approaches and hard IFR, you need to know how the system works, and there's some gotchas to look out for. Now, one of the great things about WASP is that it can provide multiple levels of service for RNAV approaches. Yeah, what the G1000 does is determine how good the navigational signal is while you are flying, and then it tells you what kind of approach it can provide. And it does this by enunciating either LPV, or L slash VNAV, or LNAV, or LNAV plus V. And when you get this enunciation, then you as the pilot determine which minimums to use as published on the chart. For example, if you get the LPV enunciation, you'll use the LPV decision altitude. If you get the L slash VNAV enunciation, you'll use the LNAV slash VNAV decision altitude. And if you get either the LNAV or LNAV plus V enunciation, you'll use the LNAV MDA minimums. To take an example of this, let's look at Dallas Love RNAV runway 31 left. Now here we're given two sets of minimums to work with. If we get the LPV enunciation, then we'll use the LPV decision altitude. And if we get the LNAV enunciation, we'll use the LNAV MDA. Now some approaches don't have LPVs, and we might get an approach with vertical guidance that's only an LNAV slash VNAV. For example, here at Austin's RNAV runway 17 left. And in this case, we might expect to get an L slash VNAV enunciation to fly to that decision altitude. There are two places where RNAV level of service is enunciated. The first is when you load the approach. You'll want to note it here so that you can correctly brief the approach. And the second is when GPS switches to approach mode. You can see here in the HSI, the enunciator LPV. You'll want to confirm the level of service you briefed. The first one is important because you'll want to know which level of service will be available so you can brief the correct approach minimums. We'll hit procedure, select the approach, and I want you to note that it is showing us which minimums it's predicting will be available when you shoot the approach. Emphasis on the word predicting. When we go over to the primary flight display, we hit procedure, select the approach, and we scroll on down to the RNAV approaches. Here again, I want you to note, it is showing us which minimums it's predicting will be available when you shoot the approach. Remember, the second place we see this is when the final approach fix becomes the active waypoint. If we zoom in on the HSI, you can see as Jacket becomes my active waypoint, the enunciator terminal changes to LPV. This confirms my level of service. With the pre was approach GPSs, you had to wait until two nautical miles prior to the final approach fix to get the approach enunciation. I think it's great that the WAS GPSs will give it to you as soon as the final approach fix becomes active because that gives you more time to plan your approach and select the correct minimums. Pro tip number one, we're going to run a check when the final approach fix becomes the active waypoint. And that looks like this. C stands for CDI, source and course. Source, I'm going to confirm the CDI is set to GPS and I've got the correct course. R is RAIM. This is where I confirm the level of service. A is autopilot. I'll make sure it's programmed as required. And P is the altitude pre-select. Remember, on an approach with vertical guidance, I'll set my altitude pre-select different than an approach with no vertical guidance. CDI is set to GPS. The RAIM is LNAV plus V. Autopilot approach mode. I've got GPS with glide path armed. And the altitude pre-select is 4,000 feet. One of the big gotchas with multiple levels of service is the level of service can actually downgrade during an approach. That leads us to an advisory right out of the gate. Loss of WAS causes the approach to downgrade. If it happens outside of the final approach fix, you'll get a message, approach downgraded. If it happens inside of the final approach fix, vertical guidance disappears with little warning. So let's talk about outside of the final approach fix. One of the neat instructor tricks that I can do is I can actually go to the multifunction display and I can simulate an approach downgrade for my student. And I do that by going to the AUX chapter GPS status page. And if I choose the soft key, 
SBOS, Spaced Based Augmentation System, I can then deselect WAS. This here now will simulate the approach downgrade for the student. When we go to the primary flight display and we look at the HSI, you can see here that LPV has changed from magenta to amber. This is the approach downgrade. Eventually, the G1000 will replace this FMS mode enunciator in amber with the magenta LNAV enunciator. At this point, we get a message that the approach has actually been downgraded and to use LNAV minima. We need to reconfigure the aircraft for a non-precision approach. So we'll go to our approach plate, we'll look at the minimum section, and we now are going to convert from a decision altitude to a minimum descent altitude of 1360. So we'll hit the timer reference button. We'll change the barrel minimums to the MDA of 1360. Once I have that set, I like to go back to the flight plan. You can see I've got the autopilot already in VS minus 1000 feet, but I'm gonna need to go to my altitude pre-select and set it to 1360. Remember, I'm converting to a non-precision approach. So at this point, I'll speed it up. I've got the enunciators, GPS, VS, minus 1,000, altitude pre-select, set to 1360. As the airplane levels off at the MDA, it's in altitude hold, I can now set the altitude pre-select to my missed approach altitude of 5,000 feet. Now, if the approach downgrade happens inside of the final approach fix, we have a different procedure for that. You can see here, the airplane is coupled to the glide path. We have the altitude pre-select set to 5,000 feet, my missed approach altitude. The FMS mode enunciator inside the HSI says LPV and magenta. Just coming up on the final approach fix now. And if we zoom in on the HSI, watch the approach downgrade. You can see here, the FMS mode enunciator is going to change from magenta to amber. We look up the flight mode enunciators and glide path is now flashing in reverse video. This is telling me that the autopilot is reverting into pitch mode. If this happens to you inside the final approach fix, you need to execute a missed approach. Hit your toga button, or if you don't have one, push the procedure button, activate missed approach, and initiate the climb manually. So let's look at LNAV plus V, which Peter and I are in agreement is a confusing feature of the G1000 and gets pilots into serious trouble. If we look at the Lano Texas RNAV runway 35 approach, you can see here is an advisory glide path, which you will often see published on non-precision approaches to give you a stable descent above the step-down fixes to the visual descent point. Now the G1000 has these advisory glide paths in its database and will provide you with vertical guidance whenever it enunciates LNAV plus V. But just remember, you are still using the LNAV non-precision minimums even though you are getting vertical guidance. So I have a caution and that is that many pilots will descend below the MDA when using LNAV plus V. You know, Peter, I think what happens is the pilot has the autopilot and their mind configured for a non-precision approach. Then at the last second, they get presented with the electronic glide path having not prepared for it ahead of time, and they naturally just reach up to the autopilot control panel and they push the approach button, which arms the glide path, not recognizing that glide path mode does not capture MDA. Let's look at an example of what I'm talking about here. You can see that the airplane is approaching the final approach fix. The pilot's been presented with the electronic glide path. They've pushed the approach button on the autopilot, which is armed glide path mode. We have an FMS mode enunciator in the HSI of LNAV plus V. The autopilot has now coupled to the glide path, but because the pilot's mind is still in non-precision mode, they take the altitude pre-select and they're setting it to MDA. 1,560 feet. Now, if I zoom in and I speed it up for training purposes, the pilot is thinking that when they get to MDA, the airplane will go into altitude hold mode and level off, but it doesn't. Remember, we're coupled to the glide path. So here's the minimum ribbon in blue. You can see it there. 
And when it gets within 100 feet, it changes to white. As the airplane reaches the MDA, you get the call out. Minimums. Minimums. The pilot is expecting the airplane to level off, but it doesn't. It goes below the MDA. The minimum ribbon changes to amber to say, hey, you're below minimums. And the pilot has now gotten themselves into trouble. And our fix for this is pro tip number two. Commit to treating LNAV plus V as an approach with vertical guidance. And what we mean by that is plan to couple to the advisory glide path, set the altitude pre-select to the missed approach altitude, just like you would do on an ILS or an LPV approach, and then fly it as if you were flying to a decision altitude. But there is a big caveat on this one. You absolutely cannot dip below MDA when executing the missed approach. Which leads us to pro tip number three. Create your own LNAV plus V decision altitude by adding 50 feet to the MDA. And this should give you enough room to start your missed approach without dipping below MDA. So you can see here we have a straight in landing runway 35 LNAV minima, an MDA of 1560. If we add 50 feet to it, we get a barrel minimum of 1610. Now, if the weather is such that you really need to descend to MDA in order to find the airport, then you should plan not to use glide path mode at all. Configure your autopilot for a non-precision approach by setting your altitude bug to MDA and descending on final using VS mode. This is a classic dive and drive. WAS approaches is one of the coolest things to happen in aviation since I've been a pilot. I mean, think about it. You get this ability to get an electronic glide path at many small airports where you would have never had an ILS. Yeah, I love flying WAS approaches. But just remember, the new RNAV procedures have multiple levels of service, and you need to know which one you're flying.